Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Yes, I have been a little bit busy. <laughs> I have made so many things over the last several weeks. It's been a blast, so much fun, especially I've been getting into my oranges and my yellows. As you can see, hello, fall. So beautiful this time of year in New England on the East Coast. And it's just so much fun playing with these colors. And also, I'm trying to use up like a lot of the scraps, the little bits and bobs that I have, and put them into something that's kind of interesting. So, first of all, please remember to subscribe to the channel. All you have to do is press the subscri subscribe button. It is 100% free all of the time on this channel. And if there's anything you want me to show you in the future, questions you have, suggestions, anything, just saying hi, leave an emoji down in the comments. So let's get started. So what I have here is a collection of really a lot of different things. I have everything from pockets to band combinations to tags, as you can see, little specimens, etc. So I will briefly try to, you know, talk about how I made these and what I made them out of. So as you guys know, I like to recycle. So I like to use things that already exist versus buying something brand new and try to make it old. And there's nothing wrong with that, but many, many times people are like, oh, I don't think what I have is good enough. And believe me, if you just look around your house, talk to your friends, your family, go to a tag sale, an estate sale, a flea market, estate sales, maybe not so much, but definitely flea markets and tag sales, you will definitely find a lot of stuff. So these I thought were interesting. I made these because I have a lot of laces and trims and they're vintage. They're like from the 50s and 60s. And I have some from the 40s as well. So what I did is I actually used some decorative paper, just scrap bits. And I took the advertisement that comes with the trims that you can buy and I simply glued these two together and I used a marker to go around the edge just to seal in the color so I didn't have a bunch of white sticking out or this is actually off white on the side. So inside you have this really cool vintage ad, budget gentle gifts that are smart and pretty. So this is, and these are actually all the instructions you need to make these tea towels. <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting, very retro, obviously. And this is another one which shows how to make this bag. So I thought it was just really cool. I still have glue on my hands from like shoring things up, but from A to Z, you could make this bag. So whoever like gets a journal that I make um, will have one of these in it and they can take these, go off and make other projects. So specimens, I went honestly a little bit specimen crazy. This is only a small sampling of some of the specimens that I made. So I made these using bits and pieces of costume jewelry. Like this has this antique enamel piece in the middle that looks like a fan. And then just as a juxtaposition, I put a cog on the other side and this is a little cluster, oh yeah, you kind of see it of people, these boys just hanging out. And so, and then there's, yes, I used a paper punch to put a hole in it so you could put whatever ribbon, twine, thong, whatever it is that you want to put through this so you can like tie it on to other things if you want to. And this one has the sun. It's made of brass and it's from an, an, an earring. So if you have like earrings and you only have one earring, great way to use them in specimens like this. You could, you see there's a hole in it. You can also like do so many different things junk journal wise with these. But I decided to put this into a specimen with 
some bits of plant that I actually colored purple and and these are coin holders that's the other thing I made these using coin holders this one has an enameled flower in it it's a little cloisonne work in there and on the back it has what you know you couldn't get away without me and some buttons showing up but a abalone shell button and you can see this one I actually did this fancy tying so that it has almost a braided effect and it's ready to hang off of whatever junk journal I want or just even to insert them inside so here is something I made this is what I was working on when my that's why my hands are so gluey and I was like you know what I'm going to make a video about this because I love this so this is from a library book that was discarded so it's actually legit from this library and yes I used marker to sort of highlight areas just to make it have a little more color than just this ivory and I used some stickers well one sticker here and material love this material so I sort of repeated it on the left right side and put a little sample right there in the center and I did cut this down to size so this was taller and I actually just cut it off here this is something a snippet I believe from a children's book or something like that and the idea with this is that I would just simply glue it down into a book or in a journal and use it somehow that way because the back is completely unfinished on purpose because of that and yes decorative cutting with my fancy little scissors curving those edges and oh something else I like to do is using my jewelers glue I will take buttons and I will turn them into clips the thing that you need to do this though is you do need to have two matching buttons so they're the same exact size you can get fancy I guess and have them not be the same size but I find that this works best and you glue them together you put your paper clip and I just use a plain paper clip but you could use a fancy one in the middle and it works amazingly as a placeholder, bookmark, just something decorative in those journals. So easy to make and it just looks, I mean, use real brass buttons, real glass buttons, etc. shell buttons and it just looks, it, you know, it has a little more of a luxe look to it than something that is made out of just a plastic button and adds that little Je ne sais quoi. Hopefully I didn't use the word je ne sais quoi already. But anyway. And then here we have this fancy lady who has this cool hat on. This old token. Which I believe is a travel token. I'm trying to see what it says. It says, I can't really read it, but it says five cents. And then a butterfly. And what I did do is I curled the wings up a bit so it has you know a little bit of depth and a more of a 2d I guess I'll say 3d perception to it a piece of a map so this is kind of a specimen but um, or more of a cluster I should say because I mean look at the size it's pretty large the back is nice it's plain I even use like a textured paper here but this is something that I would probably use like as a corner pocket you could glue it like that to keep this side open or keep the top part open there's so many things that you could do with this just use it as a decoration to a page here's another thing that I actually had fun making and I sewed in a button here and the reason why is you could do that to keep it closed and to open it you do that and you simply open it and look at what you get one of my famous pop outs which you of course could write on I added a little embellishment in here with some stickers um, another button of course <laughs> and then what else 
there has to be another pocket somewhere. So there's a pocket here and it actually goes all the way behind. So you, it's more, it's larger than it appears. I sewed this at the top just to give it, and like I said, the back on this is plain as well because several of these I made so they could be glued in and have that nice surprise effect when someone opens them up. But they also have their own self-closing mechanisms so that you don't have everything popping out of your book. And close that off. Done. And let's go to this one. So here's a cute little twinchy. Twinchies are little bits that, sorry about that, little bits that you can add to your book and they're two inches by two inches by two inches by two inches all the way around. That's why they're called twinchies because of the two inches. I learned this from, oh gosh, apologies. I'm going to try to remember to mention you in the description and the comments area of this video, but it's from a Facebook page and this wonderful lady who does, um, a, she doesn't just do it herself. There's other people that do it too, but she is definitely the most active as far as giving us challenges. And that's how I learned some new things as far as creating some of the things that I create. But here you unwind this, and this is a 20, on steroids. Most twinchies are, let me see if I have an example, something like this. There's um, nothing that's, you know, it's just usually pretty flat. It might have like some 3D things on it, etc. But the reason that this one is sort of on steroids is yes, it has an accordion notebook behind it. So it's a tiny little area where you can keep your little notes and extra secrets. And this is something, of course, you could glue in or you could just place it in the book the way it is. This is oh, a great resource, you guys, for your junk journals. Miniature railroad display pieces. So people who have railroad track, like those big game things, and they take up a room and they have them, you know, railroad tracks and they have the train on it doing its thing. Sometimes they put them out around the holidays. Some hobbyists have them out 24 hours a day, every single day, 365 days a year. But they have the teeny tiny people and little tiny signs and other things that make a town a town, a city a city, a country a country, whatever. And they have amazing little signs. That, that is where this came from. I actually have a bag that has all sorts of little people, animal signs, etc., in it. And I actually did have to like break pieces off of it so that I could just get the flat sign to put on there. But that's a great resource for junk journaling as well because they're small, they're flat, and they don't take up a lot of room. So to close this off, same thing, just wind it around, done. Tiki time. Oh, I have to show you this one. This is a fave. So this one I had a bunch of fun making. I had to be very careful cutting out the clown, um, which actually came from a vintage Chris, um, Halloween card. So this broom, all these details I had to cut out by hand. And I found this weird looking bug that came from a card, a bunch of cards that were given to me by Julia, and I love the bug cards that she gave me. So I actually cut out one of the bugs, because hello, the color works. Some creepy eyes. This actually came from a play, a, a play bill that was from Broadway, a play that was there, and I actually enhanced the eyes just to make them a bit more creepy pieces of lace. This is actually a lace sticker. This is some textured material from Julia as well. Fancy scissor cuts. This is something you obviously would, you know, tape into a page. You can actually tape it in so that it is a pocket, whether it be a full pocket, corner pocket, use your imagination. This one I had a lot of fun with as well because look at the colors and the texture of this is so cool that it almost looks textured even though it's a page from a book. And the book was about antiques and collectibles. This is a spice tin cover. It's half of it. The other half is on this side because I did a semi fold for it. 
so that I could create a pocket out of it. So it's actually a pocket and what I did do is I went around and you can see I had a thing going with a red thread and I sewed that just to give it some more depth and texture. Added a couple jewels, a couple of brads, and that's it. This will get most likely, I, my thought is I might either sew it into a book using it as one of like the elements in a feature or I might glue it down completely, but if I do that, then you don't get both decorative sides. So I'm thinking about adding a piece that would be a flap here so that it can be sewn into a book. But we'll see. Lots of journals are being made right now. I'm literally working on one, two, three journals right now, you guys. It is just such a blast. And so here I have another twinchy. This one is kind of like, I guess, um, a cluster twenty. I guess I'll call it. This was one of those little tacks that was the dude falling or with his arms up. And what I did have to do is use pliers to take off the, 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 the pin part of it, the part that sticks into the bulletin board. And I added this grommet here just because I wanted to practice using grommets and I had some. So I was like, hey, let's see what's up antique um, piece of a tape measure and all the other little accoutrements. This is made of wood and I just colored it in. Yeah, so it's, you know, also sort of a tag in a way. And well, oh, here's another one that I think is, oh, I have to show you this one before I show you that one. So this one, super fun, super cool. So turn for fun and stop for none. So I've had this gorgeous girl, which came out of a children's book, a cluster. This is Bakelite. This is some sort of Lucite plastic and a metal button. I simply stack them and I cut the girl out of a book. This is, I just think it's from a, I think this is from a book, the actual card part of it. And, oh yes it is, it's actually from a book <laughs> about like spas. And what you do is you can turn her, she turns. So I just thought that was like, you know me, surprise features are always the best. There's a certain way that I made this so that she turns the button. And you could make her turn all the way around, but eventually it will wear out the thread. So I would be careful with that. But on the back, another surprise. There's a ribbon, the word content, some glass beads, rod beads, which I sewed on here. And yeah, and here, look at the little witches that are up here in the corner. Piece of a leaf. Um, just go wild with this, you guys. It's just too much fun. And what else can I show you that's super, oh, this one. So this is a twinchy two by two by two. This one actually is a little bit longer, as you could see here, than two inches. But I did sew around the edges of it, left some, and yes, my famous and lovely embroidery thread, you guys, so much fun. And you could find it for almost nothing. Vegetable ivory buttons and you open this up it has a little sentiment hiding in there cute little squirrel this little um bird which i think it, it's supposed to be a cardinal but it doesn't have a cone on top so i'm not sure what bird this is and of course a lot of greenery leaves that i actually um, made myself and colored in and you flip it over I decided to just put a description of what the buttons are because I plan on making a, oh, and something else I did just to give this more depth is I actually added a little bit of polyfill under this leaf before I glued it down. So it sort of pops up. So it's like, th it's definitely 3D. And also I enhanced the leaf by coloring in with a marker, like some of the veins in the leaf. So one of the things I plan on doing is making a series of these for my button followers. And you, this is exactly, it's, it won't look, everyone will be different, but this is the idea is to create these cards like this. And on the back, it will have a description of what the buttons are and maybe a little bit more information. If you think that's a good idea, 
let me know in the comments below, especially if you are someone who is interested in finding a different way to display your buttons. So here we have some little collages and I don't make mine square, rectangle, circular, whatever. I just make them as they are. And these really are just to enhance the um, pages in a journal, or you can even not just glue these completely in. Obviously you can turn them into little corner pockets if you wanted to using stamps. This is actually from my favorite pack of embroidery thread little bit of sheet music these are just like scraps things that i had like you know like in their little boxes and here a bird that i cut out that i didn't have anything to use it for so i was like hey why not this is as you all know a tag so um this tag is featuring perfumes Yves Saint Laurent, one of my favorite designers. So that is who I am dedicating this to. And I added a sizz, I'm sorry, I added a zipper because he was a fashion designer. And it says signature scent. And here are some little samples of the scent. A button. This is a blue tag that I went around with some silver metallic permanent marker. The back is still plain and it is what it is, but it's fun, it has movement, it has noise, sound, and you know I like that. Here I have a corner pocket that I made, um, and yes, it featured the color yellow in this one, and it's nothing special. It is literally just a corner pocket, but you have where you could store on the back. The front sticks something down the back, sticks something down the front. The idea with this one is it will be glued into a book. And this is a knot button. Believe it or not, this is a crazy acrylic button. And I just had this weird, um, I don't know what this is. It's like for tying gifts or something. And I have like a spool of this. Not a big spool, but I have some that came with a bunch of other stuff. Decided to tie that through. And let me show you some things off of the wall back here. It's going to get messy. Here, this is once again from the Wrights sewing stuff. They have so many trims, ribbons, um, just so many things for sewing and they're still around today. They were around in my grandmother's era and she lived to be almost 100. My mother also used their items. This is from the 1950s. And what I did do is I colorized this um, just to give it a pop of color. Otherwise, everything would have been this color. And I just glued it in here next to this discarded um, library book card holder. And this is actually a page from said book. And it says September 29th, 1977. And I was telling you guys about how the insides of discarded books or old books are awesome paper for your journals because the paper is textured. It usually has a color, sometimes design. Even if it's plain, it's just usually a higher quality paper. And let's see if I have something. I can use this. I made this side into a pocket. So the idea is that this part would be glued down. You would open it up and you have this wonderful surprise, but over here you also have a pocket. Or you could actually just stick it into the book. You could actually tuck this under if you sew in your signatures. You could tuck it under the string or whatever you're using for your sew-in. And so it's something that could come in and out. Lots of options with that. And then here we have another pocket. Yes, I seem to have made several pockets. And this pocket, the pocket is right here in the back. So stick that in there. And it's from a book. It, I, it looks like the book, The Wild Things, but I, that's not the book that it's from, I don't think. This is made of wood, this little clock some little 3D metallic embellishments, little lace, some brads, obviously lace going all the way around. And I did some sewing on this as well. And these are copper brads, which I thought was cool. Here is another cool little specimen card. 
or tag. And this one, I guess I want electronic. This is actually from a greeting card. And then this flower, which I just randomly had in my um, box. I put that on there. Button. This is from an antique book. This card in the back is actually from buttons. So it's a button card. I added this decorative paper on the back of it and some wooden beads here. And then let's see what else I can show. Oh, this in time for Easter. <laughs> okay. We are beyond Easter. We're very early. Um, but I made this one just, it's just really a cluster of a lot of different things. And it's, you know, like I said, it has that Easter vibe to it. And this is made, you can see the back is plain using part of that old cool paper from a book. And it, like it has some material here. This, um, it is what it is. Oh, and let me show you at least one more thing. And that will be this specimen. So this specimen I, like I said, it's a perfect example of how, and I have to still like glue this down more and I'm going to put a decorative frame around each side of this, but these are just coin holders. Coin holders make amazing specimen holders. So it's just an idea, something that, you know, you could try. Here's another cluster that I made. Um, and in the middle, it has one of those Italian charms from a charm bracelet. And the beat goes on and on and on. So yes, there may be one or two more things here on the table I did not show. Not a lot I missed. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And hopefully you try to, you know, just go outside of your comfort zone with making things. I know that people look at what other folks make and they try to emulate it exactly, but why not try to make something different? Um, just go with it, you know, involve your kids, your grandkids, if you have them, uh, or even if you have a bored husband, I know it's weird, but dudes do make these as well. And I actually have another male themed journal that is coming up because I showed you another journal that I made for a guy and let me tell you guys he loves it when he saw it he couldn't believe it he's like this is totally me I thought this was going to be something girlish or whatever and it totally wasn't it was like all the themes that he loves and enjoys so this is something that could be for anyone if you have a boy scout troop um you know obviously you would change up the theme a little bit just to make it a little more male, um, etc. Or maybe you have a male who doesn't mind if it's a bit more feminine. That's fine as well. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Velvet Lounge Life. Remember that your health is your wealth, and without your health, you have absolutely nothing. So please take care of yourselves. Hit the subscribe button. Please do me that favor. Also, leave a comment down below. And if you want to hit that like button, that would be appreciated too. Be well.